In this video, we're going to look at how to import BFD expansions into BFD3, including our grooves, make sure we get all of our kit pieces, things like that. So in the previous BFD3 setup, download and install video, we already downloaded and installed the BFD3 core library. And we can see that's installed here, but we still have that downloaded BFD3 core library content. And since we have it installed here, we really don't need to have it taking up almost 40 gigs of space on our C hard drive. But before you delete the core library that you downloaded, you'll want to make sure you go ahead and back up that data first. So since I have the library installed on my E drive, I don't want to back it up there. So I've already backed that up on my G drive. So I'm going to delete this whole folder. Okay, now that we have that content deleted, we'll go ahead and carry on here. I'll launch BFD3 here in standalone mode. So now we need to add these libraries. So we'll come up here to tools and set up content locations. You can see we already have our BFD3 core library. And you'll see down here towards the bottom that we can, we can search a folder for content or we can search drives. Also, we could simply say drag and drop a whole folder. I could just drag my whole folder in there if I wanted to, but I'm going to use search drives. So let me uncheck all of them. So I know all of my BFD libraries are on the E drive, but I'm also going to check the C drive because I have some preset data there and I just want to see if uh, this process will pick it up or if I have to pull that in manually. But if you have BFD data scattered all about, then just make sure you check all drives and just let it scan through all your drives if you're not absolutely certain. So I will simply click search selected drives. Okay, so it looks like the scan has finished up here. You can see it found quite a lot of data and it looks like it's already activated for me. I'm going to go ahead and cycle this button to make certain everything's activated. All right, there we go. It looks like we have everything activated now. The scan not only found my BFD drum library expansions, but it also found the BFD groove folders. And some of these may need to be converted. So let's go ahead and close here. Now that we have all of our drum libraries activated, and we can see here, this indeed works. We're in the presets. So we can see now I have some of my BFD2 presets here, even brought in my user presets. So these presets here use the heavy pack. So let me load up one and see if it loads up. So there we go, it's showing that these two drums are linked, which is exactly how I had it in BFD2. If I press a kick drum here, nice. So we can see here that as it loads up these kit pieces, it's saying upgrading. We can see it's going through that process with these other drums as well. Pretty cool. And in fact, it pulled in all of my personal presets. So let's see about, uh, say, percussion. Let's see if that loads up. And indeed it does. There's 32 pieces in this kit, as you can see. So we'll let this load up a bit. All right, all those kit pieces have loaded up. As you can see, there they all are. Nice. So let's make sure they work. All right, so that works. Cool. And we'll just take a look here. We'll go to drums. We'll take off that snare. Close that down and look through here. And at first glance, it looks like we have about everything. Even brought in a sampled snare that I uh, sampled myself. That's pretty cool. So at first glance, it looks like everything I'd have to really go through to see if I'm missing any cymbals or drums or anything. Also, I have to go through all my grooves and make sure all my grooves were brought in. If they weren't brought in, I can always import grooves from down here as well. Load grooves from file, batch import, BFD1 grooves or MIDI. So that is how you would add other data paths into your BFD3.